Thank you very much, Sudenka. And so I think that the, uh, the two previous presentations have really been a great aid in setting up some of the challenges and, and some of the, the, the ideas about technology and, and how we could work together. So Peer and I are going to talk and explore some ideas around better connecting both the, the public sector and the private sector stakeholders, uh, specifically in one part of that challenge in the Global Ocean Observing System, hopefully to help develop and, and grow the Global Ocean Observing System. So let me see if I can operate this. Yes. There we go. Okay. So that's a good start. So uh, I, I work, uh, in fact, with, with Vladimir also at the IOC of UNESCO, and I support the Global Ocean Observing System. And Pierre, who will also be taking part of this presentation, uh, works for Comsberg Maritime. So in terms of cooperating, we, we kind of start here with our discussions, looking at sort of both parts of, of the equation. So to start off, I want to just uh, give a bit of background uh, to the Global Ocean Observing System, where we are today. There are now some uh, 86 countries involved in global ocean observing. So the investment in the equipment and the operations happens uh, generally at a, a national level. There are now 8,000 plus observing platforms in the water across 12 global ocean observing networks. And some of these global ocean observing networks will probably be really familiar to you, such as the, the Argo program, the drifting buoys that provide uh, surface pressure for, for weather systems. Uh, another new sort of entrance is global ocean uh, observing networks with ocean gliders, HF radar, and, and animal-borne sensors. And these are all measuring ocean and marine meteorological EOVs, both down to the complete depth of the ocean and also above the ocean in, in, in the atmosphere. And these are all aiming to deliver the data for, for, for the services across weather, across climate, hazard warnings, and, and ocean health. Really observe once and use many times across the different scales that we need to observe in the ocean. And Goose's role in, within this is to help provide the connecting tissue uh, and strengthen the system, provide some of the infrastructure so that we're coordinating towards global objectives. We're able to strengthen the system with best practices and things like that in order the, the the data will also flow out to the, the many services that we want to run off an observing system. We can't have one observing system for each area. We need one observing system that will be integrated and serve many, many actors. And so in the bioeco space, which uh, Jodica also you mentioned many new technologies in that space. We, we see many new um, observing networks coming along and, and some established networks becoming more sort of global coordinated networks there under GOOS, under the work of the, the BioEco panel. And this is just a, a one of uh, an early um, view of what that global system looks like. So we don't take ocean observations just for ocean observation's sake. We're, we're taking it to further the science, but also provide solutions uh, that will underpin societal development for the future. Uh, we really are the foundation of, of a multitude of downstream applications. And the societal need for ocean observations, as really brought to the fore by uh, Vladimir in talking about what the ocean decade is all about, and also by Jodica about the, the new technologies that we need, is, is really we need to expand our capability to observe the ocean. There's a, a huge societal demand for this information, driven by key and unfortunately unavoidable factors. We have climate change, which needs, uh, we need new and better forecasts of, of our weather systems as these change. And looking out to the future, what, what, how are we going to adapt our coastal communities? How, uh, what, what do we need in, in order to enable society to adapt to these changes? Uh, plus things like uh, uh, looking at uh, the, the carbon storage, we, we need the baseline measurements now to enable us to see if investment in carbon storage in the future is going to be effective. So all of these needs are growing. And as Vladimir brought to the fore, ocean management, and this is a big key aim under the decade. We, we need to better manage our oceans, we need to maintain those ecosystem services and develop uh, sustainable blue growth. So all of these will need data to underpin them. 
And so, uh, really, as, as uh, Pre mentioned, there is a significant opportunity here for growth in the market for technology in support of, of science and society. And we look at it as a, as a value chain, that the observations from satellites and, and from in situ are there underpinning a wide variety of applications down the value chain with data management and, and modeling and service development there uh, as key components of that value chain that enable the uh, solutions to reach the, the end users. And this is part of the GOOS, um, the Global Ocean Observing System, developed a, a strategy for 2030 back in 2019 that foresaw the, the real need to expand the ocean observing system and also foresaw that it could no longer be just the research community of science that would do this lift, that we really need strong partnership with industry in order to do that with new technology and I think really new business models. So this is what we're, we're really here to talk about. What, what are these opportunities that we're perhaps mentioning and, and how might we better collaborate? So in the, uh, the, the blue economy, as we've, uh, I think actually on Tuesday morning, there was a whole session on the blue economy and the new blue economy, but it's really expected to grow and be a, a, a more important part of our national economies. And the data from the observing system uh, flows out into this new blue economy and in fact is a, is a supporting arrangement enabling that to, to be sustainable and also to grow and also supports the, the global economy in weather forecasts and, and other areas. So this, this new blue economy of technology and observations and services really supports the growth but is also a demand uh, coming from the blue economy to, to increase the, the capabilities in this sector. So what might this look like? Um, I mentioned the ocean observing value chain. So we kind of broken it down for the new blue economy to look at where um, in the different areas where industry and technology could be interacting. And so uh, what we see here are sort of a vast multitude of observing technology products here at Oceanology International with sensors, platforms, systems, a lot of innovation there. So this is sort of the, the start of this value chain. And then there's also technology in terms of taking the observations and measurements and we see more services and business models here. Also in data management and the visualization and the transmission of that data. And then the information derivation, how do you create the information users need out of that? And then from that on in with services into sort of delivering this information to decision makers and having perhaps some oversight of that, that this will enable us to answer the questions that are, that are pressing to society and that we can be efficient about it and that we're not sort of reinventing the wheel in a hundred different places. So how, how does industry interact with these various sectors? And this is uh, what we see um, from, you know, uh, from within the, the government and the, the, the intergovernment sector. And also I think what we see here at Oceanology International, that in that first box in the providers and the developers, this is really where uh, private industry is, is most active at the moment, really developing the technologies. We see new entrants and new business models in taking the observations um, one example would indeed be sail drone uh, taking out there, taking the observations and in fact doing some of the data management and delivering that data to end users. So coming into that second box. And then in the intermediaries, we see public and private uh, both interacting. But really in the producers area, the, the observing system and the data management, this is really mainly the public sector that is undertaking this, this work at the moment. And as mentioned we think that there's innovation potential for industry in in all of these boxes and also business opportunities in all of these boxes essentially you can monetize at any one of these areas or produce cross uh, cross-section services um, as mentioned for example with with sail drone so we wanted to create some kind of visualization as to what this might look like and uh, this is a very sort of sketchy attempt so the uh, in the red, in the orange circle is where industry is really involved and, and much more active at, at the moment. Um, that the size of the, the circle gives you some sense. And then our estimate uh, of, of where there is the growth potential in these marketplaces. So the arrows are representing where we see growth potential. So we see growth potential 
for industry across all of these areas in the new blue economy, in ocean observing, but really higher growth potential, perhaps in these areas where industry hasn't traditionally played such a big role. So, I mean, this all sounds very good, um, but uh, it hasn't come to pass as yet. So perhaps there is a, a little bit of work to do to realize this potential. And so this is where I'm gonna hand over to Pierre to talk from the industry's perspective about some of the, the challenges that may exist. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. I think this was a very nice introduction um, and gave a very nice overview of how the sectors interact, where pri private public partnerships should come in and where development can take place. So as we see here, there is some work to be done. However, luckily, we do not have to start from scratch. Something has been done already and important changes are underway. And the changes are underway within all the stakeholder groups. So if we look at the first one, academia and science, we see that there, we see that there is consolidation and harmonization happening. There are more clusters of clusters, more organization, essential ocean variables are defined. There is a, a lot um, structuring underway. We have also um, the open and fair data principle being included more and more into funding schemes and made mandatory as we heard it with the uh, Schmidt Ocean Institute as well. And we see Goose transitioning towards a sustained, fully operational uh, um, system like we have it for the uh, meteorological environment. This is also a very important shift. Let's look at how industry is changing. As we saw in the preceding uh, schematics, uh, whereas the focus was on the technology, on the platforms, on the tools, we now see that more and more companies expand towards this information derivation and um, towards digital solutions, towards data handling. So it is already shifting slightly towards this uh, second, third and fourth box from the preceding slide. And we have everything that falls under the headline of the new blue economy. And thirdly, there are common trends that we all observe in the news. We see Fridays from Futures, we see the sustainability uh, aspect also being included in public traded companies. Uh, this is a general uh, trend that we should make use of, which is also represented uh, by the decade, as was also nicely introduced in the earlier talks. Okay. Now, there are some bummers though. Um, there is some challenges to come over and let's look at the data producers, operational services, scientists, institutions that collect data. We do not have best ways to identify and fast track promising technologies to grow existing technologies, but also to take the technologies from other sectors and apply them in the ocean space. The unit costs are fairly, fairly high because the unit numbers are not as large as they could be. We do not have universal standards in all respects. So the best practices development is going along well, but there is still room to take. Um, Long-term product support can be very challenging if we look at some small and medium enterprises that undergo um, sometimes difficult development periods. Finally, the supply chain can be very fragile if you have products produced in lower um, production numbers. And finally, that needs to be mentioned as well, the budget demands are substantial if we look at this uh, very large, ambitious spatiotemporal observing uh, ideas. There are also some challenges on the provider side, and these are that they would like to see a consistent way forward uh, concerning the observational needs. Which parameters will be in demand? Where will they be in demand? When will they be in demand? Which will be the platforms to carry these type of sensors? All this is uncertain, related to uncertainty. But if, uh, on the other hand, um, if there was more uh, visibility and a clearer market potential and the market wasn't that fragmented, that you would not only sell a single sensor here, five sensors, they are all um, accompanied by the required um, support you have to deliver, that would be a change a big and an important change. Of course, these uh, fragmented users, they also ask for specific configurations, developments and adaptations. And I think we can walk to almost any booth here and we hear about these challenges related to it. And uh, finally, um, 
there is also interaction of new commercial services with the established operations and they should be improved a little bit how do the new platforms engage with the existing observing system how is the data transferred etc and now let's paint a very colorful and nice picture so what do we want to have so what would be this mature environment what would be the advantages for all these different user groups i mean the data data producers they would receive specifically designed sensors right a very very um, well prepared equipment for a certain task the drop uh, the price uh, the, the cost per data point uh, would drop significantly because sensors would be produced in larger numbers um, longer deployments are possible at higher measuring frequencies the ease of operation would be given because the sensors are not made for uh, um, highly educated scientists anymore they are made for people to deploy them just look at uh, um, cars or let's look at uh, uh, mobile phones or, or something like this how advanced they are to make the usability extremely easy and then of course common protocols and standards should be used let's look at let's look at usb ports for example something like this should be implemented for sensors going forward and finally on the budget side uh, if the community is harmonized enough then can bargain very good prices because they are asking for a large batch of production and this is a very important economic aspect as well for the providers they are equally interesting and promising uh, things possible if the market was clear and uh, planning reliability was given um, larger industries larger companies would get in engaged and give a new momentum to this environment we would also grow the small businesses even faster and um, such a um, promising economic environment would ease investigation uh, um, investments and larger orders would be the result of it large-scale industry processes could be implemented leading to a much more efficient uh, production scheme and then the increased demand for technological innovation would foster the exchange and drive the development of the equipment forward and added services would be expect uh, would be accepted maintenance contracts service agreements all of that uh, would be the result of a more mature environment and finally and that is listed extra more advanced operational services new platforms new type of businesses would be uh, accepted because they provide clear benefit to this environment and last but not least it is also the society that highly benefits from it because as we have seen from the value chain it is ultimately in this ocean observing uh, environment and in the new blue economy environment the society and the need of society for certain knowledge and for certain products to drive this overall process so they would profiteer from these information products they would uh, have uh, cost savings because the whole process got more efficient and there would also be faster progress because we heard in many talks so far that uh, time is not infinite in this respect and that we should achieve results first so now we saw where we stand where the challenges are and where we would like to be so we understand that we are in a transitioning process so how do we achieve these benefits? How do we overcome the challenges? How can we speed up this process? And how can we be inclusive for new commercial schemes in this respect? And how can we exploit the potential of information services? And what we concluded on in our working group is that it is through the collaborations and the partnerships and the communication initiatives to combine the providers the producers and the intermediaries for the benefit of the end users and this is ideally done in this value chain through private public partnerships and we should also think in ambitious projects and that's why in order to meet the big ask of society we need an active and vibrant dialogue between industry that's why we are here academia and the government and the industry aspect must be emphasized in this respect this technology contribution is very important on this mission and therefore um, we are working towards these um, goose marine technology society industry dialogues over the next year to really achieve some concrete um, agreements on the way forward and this is where emma will take over again
Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. And walking the floor, I must say, yesterday and talking with the uh, various sort of um, industry players, different sizes, it, it came out, you know, some of the challenges that, that Pierre has mentioned that, that we've been talking about are, are reflected back to us. Um, for example, smaller and medium-sized uh, um, enterprises don't know where to start with engaging with the ocean observing system as a market. And we're saying it is a market, but it's very fragmented. So how can we overcome those, those barriers to engagement? How can we make it easier for opportunities to emerge and also opportunities. Uh, other, other companies mentioning that, well, we are taking these observations for our clients. We also take these. I wonder if we could use them somehow. Of course, this would be amazing, but we need to develop some, some dialogue, some structure to, to, to start thinking about how to, how to do that. So with, uh, with Goose and uh, with colleagues, colleagues at the Marine Technology Society, including Zdenka and, and also including Ralph, um, we, we developed the idea of having a series of industry dialogues. And, and this is really to create some, some solid uh, curated discussion around key topic issues uh, between science, government and industry to really get to the bottom of what these key challenges are. I mean, I can walk around and get some ideas, but it's not the same as getting some experts together and really deciding what we can move on first and coming out with some recommendations. So we're going to move forward. Um, GOOS, MTS and some industry partners have been developing the idea of these industry dialogues. And this is what we'd like you to get involved with. There are going to be four targeted sessions across 2022 to 2023. So as I said, there'll be industry, government, and the implementation, the, the operational experts uh, gathered to, to have a curated discussion around key questions across maturing the market uh, in these value chain sections. So we'll look at the supply and development of instruments and sensors. What are the key challenges and opportunities there? Integrating new networks and business models into the ocean observing system. What, what do we need to understand in that space? And looking at ocean information and delivery. How can we better improve uh, the, the access to perhaps, but also the exploitation of ocean data that's available in order to get the information to decision makers. And then in a special session, look at new technology across the decade. These will all be virtual sessions and we will curate what the uh, information about what we're really going to drill into in these sessions before the event. They will also have a plenary component so that everybody who wants to be involved can also ask their questions. The aim is to formulate some clear recommendations recommendations coming out of them that will then be acted upon by GOOS and MTS and hopefully also industry. Four sessions aren't going to solve everything, but perhaps we can begin to shift the dial to greater partnership with industry and greater interest in industry and in being part of the global ocean observing system and uh, integrating towards the, the societal solutions. And it's obviously in my interest, because I, I work in the Global Ocean Observing System, and looking at the work that needs to be done uh, in order to deliver the, the wealth of information that uh, society is going to need. We, we, we're going to need the new technologies, as mentioned by Jacinta. We're also going to need new business models and the innovation happening from industry and the efficiency and the support to help lift the, the system and deliver the information, but there will be opportunities to obviously make money for industry uh, sort of at all of those components. So the initial session will be in June 2022. I think we set the date as the 22nd or the 23rd. I would encourage you to register through the GOOS and the MTS websites. And if you are interested in being a part of the, the dialogue about what questions we really need to key in on for those sessions, then also please get in touch with myself or, or Zdenka or indeed Pia, and we can involve you in, in that part of the process. So with that, I'd like to thank you for listening and also thank my colleagues at, uh, at Goose, but also MTS and our industry partners for helping shape these dialogues and perhaps start the, uh, the transition process. Thank you.